thank you, every, um, Rod and Low Carb Down Under, for arranging this conference. It's always so fun to see our low carb friends. And I'm talking about continuous glucose monitors, not in people with type 2 diabetes, but in the healthy people. There aren't many of them, but just in healthy people. And I use these monitors in a lot of my patients, and some of them do become a little bit worried. And there's controversy, actually, as to whether we shouldn't use them in healthy people, because they do get worried. So the two that I use and uh, are the Freestyle Libra. So hopefully you all know what a continuous glucose monitor is. It's just a very clever sensor that measures the blood glucose just shallow, just in your dermis, and it feeds the information back to an app on your phone or to something called a reader. And it's been life-changing for people with diabetes. They don't need to finger stick all the time. They get an immediate feedback as to what their sleep's done to their sugar, what food does to their sugar. So every minute to five minutes they're getting this feedback so it's amazing so of course us healthy people want to have a go as well so this freestyle libra is the one i mainly use and we're so lucky in australia because we can just walk into the pharmacy and buy one that's sitting there behind the counter nobody asks you any questions and then you upload the libra link app onto your phone and away you go um, they do cost over $100 and they last about two weeks, but at the moment there's a trial offer for $15, so quickly get on. Um, the problem is when you buy it online, they will ask, do you take insulin or not? The Dexcom G6 is also amazing, and I never used to suggest it for patients because it was over $700, but they're $10 at the moment. So if you go to that website, they've got a trial offer for $10 if you just Google it. Then you get the Dexcom G6 app on your phone, and again, away you go. But there's a lot of controversy. Should we be recommending this in healthy people? And this became clear to me back in 2021. So like Laureen, I am a big Nick Norwitz fan. He's amazing. And Nick, um, he's a Harvard medical student, and he got 40 of his friends to wear continuous glucose monitors. And they published their, tr their findings because they all found it so helpful. And they learned a lot about metabolic health. But there was outrage on Twitter about this study. So everything in nutrition involves outrage. Uh, Nick, it was like, how ridiculous, medical students with CGMs, what could be more dangerous than that? Um, and Danielle, there were a few reasonable comments. So Danielle Bellardo is a vegan cardiologist, and, and, and Nick was bullied a little bit. Um, but this is quite a reasonable comment. You know, there's no data that using CGMs in healthy people is beneficial. You know, until we've got robust, randomised controlled trials, we shouldn't, no health professional should be recommending it. And then Nicola Guess is a PhD dietitian, very clever from Oxford, and she said something, and I do see this in my practice too, that healthy people come to her, they've worn their CGM, their blood sugar just goes from 4.9 to 6.4 after they eat, and they're like, oh God, I've got type 2 diabetes. So that's what she sees, so she thinks people shouldn't do it. Um, but I'm with Nick. He says, well, it's just data. People worry when they, they scale. we give them a scale, they weigh themselves, when they measure their blood pressure at home, they get worried about that, you know, but it's still very useful. So my job today is to teach you not to worry, okay? You're a normal, non, you're not normal, you're a non-diabetic person, you wear a CGM, I want you not to be worried. So when you set up your app, it's going to ask you to set a lower and upper limit. And you need to set the low as low as you can. But no matter what, that app is going to ring a bell if it drops to 3.1. Now, that does not mean you need to go and eat chocolate. <laughs> OK, a lot of people go, oh, it's 3.1, I was having a hypo. No, this app is set up for people with diabetes on insulin and sulfonylureas, and that, that's to save their life because they could die. But that's not you. You're not on insulin. You're not on a sulfonylurea. If your sugar is, is low, well, that's great. That's healthy. So set it as low as you can. And then the upper limit on the app, you can either set it at 7.8 or at 10. And in a minute, you'll, you'll learn why. It's not NASA technology. It makes mistakes. So often you'll put, not often, but sometimes you'll put your sensor on and you'll get all these weird numbers. One, two. That's a faulty sensor. It's not that there's something wrong with you. So you'll have to send it back to the um, company, keep the serial number, get your GP to write a letter, and they'll send you a new one. 
The other thing is I've noticed that the Dexcom G6 can read high for the first few days, so you might be worried, but just let it settle in. And then, of course, if you sleep on your sensor, you're going to see huge dips in the night to nothing. It isn't that you died. <laughs> it's that you've squished your sensor and so it looks like a big dip. So if you see those big, strange dips, that's what it is. The other common question is some people are brave and they do a finger stick blood glucose and then they measure their sensor and they find a different number and it worry, worries them. So they're measuring two different things. The, the, the blood one is measuring your venous capillary blood and the sensor's just a little bit back in, in, back in time because it's measuring what's in your tissues. So not what's in the blood but in the tissues. So they're measuring different time points. So make sure if you've just had a meal, you'll definitely find there's a difference. And also remember there's a plus or minus 20% error rate in the technology. So they're going to be a little bit different as long as the trends are the same. Now, when you exercise, strange things happen to your blood glucose. So that's me going for a walk on the beach and I wasn't having a hypo. My sugar just dropped to 3.2, which is beautiful. My muscles are taking up the glucose, so it's dipping down to 3.2 and that's terrific. Um, but if I do intense exercise, I'll go to the gym, I can sometimes see my blood sugar, it'll go up to eight. But again, that's fine. That's my liver making glucose so that I've got lots of energy um, and my muscles have got a lot of glucose to work properly. So what you sort of worried, what sugars should I be getting? Well, there's not a lot of studies, it's all new, but wearing continuous glucose monitors in healthy young people, see remember it's hard if uh, just doing the population, remember most people aren't healthy, but if you pick out the super young healthy people, most of the time they're under 7.8. But some of the time they do go above, they can go up to 10, but they never go above 10. So you want to be pretty much most of the time under 7.8, but don't freak out if you go above it. That's okay. But you should be mostly under 7.8. Um, and if it's low, that's okay. As long as you're feeling fine, that doesn't mean chocolate. Now, I just want to give a plug for Mario Kratz, who's got an incredible blog based on science. It's called Nourished by Science. He's done a whole series about glucose spikes. Um, and this is his diagram, which I've pinched. Um, and he said 99% of the time, healthy people are under um, 140, which is 7.8. And only 1% of the time, but that's still 15 minutes of the day, they're, they're shooting up to, 10, up to 10, but they never go above 10. So this is where it gets interesting postprandial blood glucose. So after you eat, what happens to your blood glucose? If you eat food with glucose in it, your blood glucose will go up, okay? If you eat berries, your glucose will go up and that's healthy and normal. Just try and keep it under 7.8. So remember Nicola Guess was saying people think they've got diabetes because their blood sugar goes up a little bit. That's healthy, that's normal. But when it isn't normal is when you're getting very large glucose rises. So you're shooting up to 10 or down big swings. And we know, particularly in diabetes, that these, this glucose variability is not good. It causes endothelial dysfunction, inflammation, oxidative stress, increased mortality and cardiovascular disease. So if you're doing big swings, look at what you just ate and maybe don't eat that. And this is where it comes to low-carb cheat days. And, and I do feel concerned if people cheat a lot because when you're following a low-carb diet, your body isn't ready for that glucose. The, the pancreas isn't ready for that glucose. So you'll eat a big pizza and your glucose will go much higher than it would have if you're eating a high-carb diet. It, it's even one meal makes a difference. So if you eat a low-carb meal, the next meal your sugar will go higher. So even one meal makes a difference. If you're low-carb all the time and then you eat a big glucose load, you will find your sugar will go much higher because your body's mainly running on fat and your pancreas isn't ready for it. So that might be a reason to wear a CGM and do a cheat day and just check what happens. So this is a, quite an interesting story. So back in 2019, Rod Taylor was very kind and gave me a free continuous glucose monitor to wear. And I was a big cereal eater. I wasn't low carb myself. Um, and I was always eating porridge. I loved it. 
So I got my CGM and um, I ate my bowl of porridge with unsweetened almond milk and no sugar. And look what happened. Um, and everyone will go, oh, that's because you're low carb. No, I wasn't low carb. And it went to 11.7. And every single time I eat oats, it happens. And then look what happened. I dropped right down to 3.4. Now, that's a big glucose variability. And that doesn't make me feel good. And for years I have suffered from this, like mid-morning I'd be shaking and not knowing what to do because of my morning cereal. And it's sort of immediately... That's it, that's, that's lifelong problem of mid-morning shaking and feeling terrible, fixed because it's the porridge. Then I ate some rice. <laughs> so that's a big swing, you know, people talk about spikes, that's a spike, not just a normal up. So of course I, sort of, I was freaking out, I was going, oh my goodness, what is this, gosh. So then I got on the internet and I was very grateful to this study from 2018. There's different glucotypes, we all react differently to carbohydrates, we're all a bit different. And um, this is uh, Professor Snyder um, and from, from Stanford, um, and he's saying covert spikes are a problem because they can contribute to cardiovascular disease risk and insulin resistance. Even individuals considered normoglycemic by standard measures, so that's me, um, exhibit high glucose variability using CGM, with glucose levels reaching pre-diabetic and diabetic ranges 15% and 2% of the time. So I was very reassured. So that's, that's seen on this study using CGMs in healthy people. And of course, this can unmask this thing called reactive hypoglycemia. And again, people get concerned about this. I even had a lady email me today thinking that just because her sugar went to 6.9 and then went down to 3.8 after berries was reactive hypoglycemia. It isn't. It's when it goes very high and then you see it dip right down low and you get symptoms. You don't feel well. Um, so that's actually my sister. So I got her to wear one and look, her sugar with porridge goes to 11 and then drops to 2.9. I mean, that, she's not feeling good at that 2.9. Okay, so the problem with reactive hypoglycemia, which is defined as a glucose um, below 3.9 after food, which actually I don't like that definition, is you feel awful and it makes you hungry and it's proven it makes you seek out higher calorie foods. So that's why you're in the tea room after the porridge at 11 a.m. eating biscuits because it, it's reactive hypoglycemia. So how do you avoid it? Okay, it's obvious, you go low carb, isn't it so obvious? But not everyone wants to go low carb. If you add protein, then that seems to help. So you can see me, porridge for breakfast, I eat two eggs before, I don't get the terrible spike. So eat some more protein or go low carb. Now the last thing I wanna talk about is why is my glucose higher in the morning? A lot of people ask me this. It's often seen in diabetes. So overnight, your blood sugar's creeping up, but you didn't eat anything. Where's that glucose coming from? Um, and that's one of my patients. And you can see she's got diabetes. She's got the high sugars most of the time, above 7.8. But overnight, she's got that big, big glucose coming in. And that's the liver-making glucose. It's the liver-making glucose. That's where it came from. Um, and so... This happens because at about 3 a.m., you're making these hormones, glucagon, adrenaline, cortisol, um, and their job is to push, push up your, your glucose, get you ready for the day. Now, if you're not a diabetic, you usually make enough insulin to keep that under control, but if you're a diabetic, it's gonna go up. But interestingly, on a low carbohydrate diet, we have higher blood sugars in the morning, and it may be because it's such a low insulin state. I'm not sure why it happens, but it definitely does. But again, we don't get huge sugars. It might be six. People say, why is my first morning sugar higher? And it's because of this thing called the dawn effect. Finally, we're not measuring insulin. So I do have some patients who I know are metabolically unwell and they wear the CGM and they get a much better trace than me. They get beautiful sugars. And they'll come back and go, hey, I'm perfect. You go, no, we're not measuring insulin because it's underneath working very hard to keep the blood glucose under wraps. So it doesn't, you don't know what the insulin's doing. And finally, there's this study just out in June, CGMs in healthy people. Um, so they looked at all the information that we have 
Based on the published evidence, we suggest most adults could benefit from wearing a CGM to recognise how different foods affect their own glycemic response. It control glucose variability because that reduces your risk of cardiovascular disease and may help with weight loss, hunger, sleep and mental health. So they're arguing wearing a CGM, you can pick up big swings in your blood glucose and of course avoid foods that do that. So I strongly believe that healthy people can benefit from sometimes wearing a CGM. You might pick up that you do have diabetes, you might be above 7.8 a lot of the time. Um, you can measure your response to carbohydrate-containing foods and pick up that glucose variability and see, do you have this terrible reactive hypoglycemia? And low carb works beautifully for me. I have a beautiful flat tray, so I don't get reactive hypoglycemia. I can go all day without rushing to the tea room to eat cakes. Thank you. Thank you.